Opening his ears for the days and for the night, him in the 120 should join in peace. Good morning. God is good all the time. We begin our prayers in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us take a moment to acknowledge our sins before God, bow our heads, and ask for his love and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. We join our special intentions for this Mass, our special prayers with the official prayer of the Church. And I offer this Mass for you and for your families, for peace and good health. By your help, we beseech you, O Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, where they broke my covenant. I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from the least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord. I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
in response to this song, create a clean heart in me, O oh God. greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense, thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. salvation and a willing spirit sustaining me. I will teach transgressors your way and sinners shall return to you. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who will obey him. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came, came from heaven, 
I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he will die. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. God is good all the time. Welcome to the fifth Sunday of Lent. Fifth Sunday. Next week, we'll be celebrating Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday next week. Lent is almost over. I will say a few words of homily. And then I will get back into my Mass 101 and begin to wrap it up on this day. The Gospel passage was already long, so I have no option than to follow suit with the long homily because they have to rhyme, right? It's called liturgical coordination, okay? <laughs> um, Anybody here, has anybody planted something? Maybe you grew up in a farm. Have you planted like a corn or something? Anybody? Anybody? Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Matt, can you tell us what you planted? Tomatoes. Peppers. Wonderful. Awesome. Awesome. I planted something myself because I grew up in a small town. I remember when I was little, I planted a corn. They said, oh, it will, it will spring up after a few days. I kept going back every day to watch. I put something to make sure I don't forget the spot. The day that I saw the corn kind of Spring up, I was like, wow. I felt a sense of accomplishment. Don't remember how long it took. Probably a few days. But there's, there's a sense of accomplishment when we plant something and we see that seed begin to grow. Whether it will be corn or it will be avocado or orange or all kinds of seeds. The Bible reminds us today that unless a wheat fall, it remains a wheat. It has to fall, be planted, before it can spring up again. Jesus did the same for us. He had to die so that we may have new life. He had to humble. It took great humility for him to do that. In the first reading today, from the book of Prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 31. That one is easy to remember. Jeremiah 31, 31. He said, I will be their God. He said, I will make a covenant with my people. And when I'm their God, they shall be my people. Can we just leave the walls of this chapel on this day? Asking for the grace, the determination, the strength, the faith. to truly be God's people this week. I'm not talking about a month from now. I'm talking about this week. 
and he will take all forms of discipline, spiritual discipline, to be his people this week, beginning from our place of work, among our friends, family, and the people that we meet, the decisions that we make, how we treat people this week. Jesus humbled himself. He died in order to bring us life eternal. And in Jeremiah 31 that we read today, he said, I will forgive them their sins. Almost like a prediction of what was going to happen in the New Testament. I will make a new covenant with my people. A covenant like you've never experienced. It's not like the covenant that I made with my, with my people and they still disobeyed me. This is a special kind of covenant. That's almost like a prophetic message of what is to come many, many, many years from that time. And it was fulfilled. Jesus died. Just like the seed will, will die in order to have a new life and abundant one. And that's the abundant life he gave us by dying for us on the cross. So we challenge ourselves this week to just make a new covenant, a special one with God this week. What would it be like you, uh, for you? A covenant with God this week will look different for each one of us because we have different family dynamics, we have a group of friends. We have different work schedules. We have habits, good and bad, that we can say, you know, this week, I'm going to make a special covenant with God. Okay, like I promised, I'm going to switch gears now and get back to Mass 101. As you know, we've been talking about Mass 101 throughout this season of Lent. Again, I will remind you how we started the gathering, right? We gather. Introductory part of the Mass. The song, the procession, leading up to the penitential rite and all that. And we do the storytelling which is the readings, right? Up until we finish the liturgy of the word. And then we do the meal sharing, which I started last week, talked about consecration and all that. So I want to pick up from there and end today with the closing of the mass. We talked about the epiclesis last week weekend, and after the epiclesis, you know what happens? I'm, I'm going to give you a theological terminology. Some of you must have heard it before. See, it's a long word in theology. It's called transubstantiation. That is the transforming of the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. It takes faith for us to appreciate that. It's called transubstantiation through the action of the Holy Spirit, through the epiclesis of the calling down of the Holy Spirit. When that happens, we, are, we, we, we finish the Eucharistic prayer. Have you ever wondered why we end the Eucharistic prayer after consecration and all that with a great MM? Don't you play MM all the time, right? We call it the great amen. We say amen to everything. People preach. Preachers will say, can somebody in the congregation give me a amen? Why do we do that great amen? Towards the end of the consecration, the priest will grab the chalice, the precious blood. Now, remember, bread and wine. Now it has been transformed through tra transubstantiation and epiclesis, right? Now, we grab the body and blood of Christ and repeat the words we hear all the time at Mass, through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor. Of 
course, belongs to our God forever and ever. We all say amen. What does amen mean? Amen means so be it. I believe it. Amen is an affirmation of our faith. When we receive communion, we say the body of Christ. People will say amen, meaning I believe it. So be it. The mass simply means, as we know, thanksgiving. So when we do that great amen, it's a sign of special praise to God that you've allowed us to come together to worship. You've allowed us to repeat the words of Christ himself, take and eat, take and drink, this is my body. Do this in memory of me. And as we continue that mass, we give that great amen a sign of praise to God. That amen also gets us to the next part of the Mass. Because after that great amen, what do we do? We usually stand, right? And when we stand, we get into the communion rites. Now we are ready to receive communion. Now we are about to receive communion. We do the Our Father we know that our Father has a lot of petitions there, about seven petitions. Sometimes, because we say it all the time, we take it for granted. Have you slowed down in your room, in your prayer, in your night prayer, with your family, and just don't, don't rush it and repeat those words of Christ himself, the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father. It has petitions. We begin with the praise. Hallowed be the, thy name. Blessed be your name. Your kingdom come. That's a prayer. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Meaning, your will be done in my life as it is in heaven. Sometimes, do we always mean it all the time or sometimes? Yeah, we'll be done on earth. Yeah, we'll be done in my life. Sometimes that's not what we mean. We mean, yeah, we'll be done in my life, but check with me first. He doesn't always check with us. Why? Because he is God and we are not. That's another petition. Give us this day our daily bread. It's a powerful one. A lot of people pray for that around the world. When we are privileged to have our daily bread, we shouldn't take it for granted. A lot of people pray for a piece of bread, for a meal. A lot of people go to bed around the world. They don't even know how tomorrow is going to be, how they're going to feed their families the next day. A lot of people don't have jobs around the world because of the pandemic now. It's a powerful prayer petition. Give us this day our daily bread. If we have it, becomes a thanksgiving. If we have it, we can think of those who don't have it around the world. Forgive us our trespasses. This is a big one. A big one for all of us. Each one of us. No exception. Forgive us our sins. It didn't just stop there. He said, as we forgive those who sin against us. Did you hear the condition? It's a great one right there. I want you to forgive me because I'm going to forgive those who have offended me too. Can you think of that? Just think about that for a moment and see what we repeat all the time at Mass. And it also has lead us, and lead us not into temptation. Can we this week say, and lead us not into temptation. Can we write it and put it by our mirror where we brush our teeth in the morning and say, you know what? And lead us not into temptation. And I would not drag myself 
or allow myself, give myself to be influenced by environment or occasions of sin this week and deliver us from all evil. We all need that. Nobody wants shenanigans in life. Nobody wants just stress and anxiety. Deliver us from all evil. And then we end with what? Amen. That powerful, so be it. I believe it. After we do that, we enter the sign of peace. Do you know that the sign of peace wasn't always there at Mass? It was inserted into the Mass after Vatican II. In the early 60s. Sign of peace. We wish each other the sign of peace. Traditionally, by the shaking of hands. The pandemic has kind of changed it to where we make eye contact and nod. I want peace and I wish you peace. And peace is the best thing that can happen to anybody. You can have as much money as you have. More, you can have possessions that will fill this room times 20. If there's no peace, everything is in vain. I read this morning that the founder of Texas Roadhouse, that steakhouse that we love, just died of unfortunate circumstances. It doesn't matter what we have. We need that peace. That peace that we wish each other is what we wish ourselves. And so, my friends, peace is important. And you know what the highest form of peace is? Shalom. That is the peace of Christ. The peace that can only come from God. The peace that surpasses all human understanding. Even the Muslims, they understand the importance of peace when they say, Salam Aleikum. Peace be with you. We shouldn't just say it. We have to live it too. I wish you that peace. I wish it to myself. I wish it to your families. I wish it to my friends and family too. That highest form of peace. Shalom. Shalom, my friends. Shalom, my friends. The peace of Christ I give to you. Shalom, my friends. The peace of Christ. The peace of Christ. The peace of Christ I give to you. That's what we wish each other at Mass. We're going to do it today. And from there, we enter what we call the Agnus Dei, the Lamb of God, that we sing or recite every day. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, my sin, your sin, the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Grant us shalom. Some parents, when their kids get into trouble, they'll call their names like three times, right? John, 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 I want you over here. That's when you know that she's not kidding. She wants you to change your behavior right then. So when we do, when we say Lamb of God three times, we emphasize it because we need that peace. Remember what Isaac asked Abraham when Abraham said, hey, son, we're going to go offer a sacrifice. We're going to go out in the woods and offer sacrifice. The little son, Isaac, said, daddy, and where, is the, where is the lamb? Where is the sheep for the sacrifice? Because that's what he's used to. Abraham said, son, the Lord will provide because Abraham was still battling with this message. Am I going to sacrifice my son? 
but he abandoned himself to the will of God. And God taught all of us a lesson by saying, stop, you can't do this. God provided him a lamb and a sheep. He offered a sacrifice. And then in the New Testament, God himself, the second person of the Holy Trinity, Jesus Christ, offered himself as that ultimate sacrifice. Fulfilling what Abraham said long time ago, God will provide. He offered his only son in order to save us. After the Lamb of God, we then get ready for the communion. We cleanse our hearts. And we say, Lord, I am not worried that you should enter under my roof. You know who said that? These are all in the Bible. Remember the centurion? The leader, a great leader, like a commander in our language today, a great commander that came to Jesus and said, my, my daughter is ill. Can you please come and do what you do, you do best? A little miracle? I need it. My daughter is dying. They didn't have any medical care in those days. There weren't hospitals. They didn't have ambulances in those days. He walked a long distance and met Jesus and said, if you please come to my house, and bring healing to my dying daughter. Jesus said, you go, I will come to your place. He said, but I'm not worthy that you can come into my roof, under my roof, in my house. I'm not worthy. This is the top commander. Jesus said, just go. Because of his faith, before he got home, the daughter was already healed. We repeat that, those words when we repeat, before we receive communion. Lord, I'm not worried that you should enter into my heart, into my, under my roof. Repeating the words of the centurion. That's a sign of humility right there. And we receive communion. After we receive communion, what happens? Do we just go back and just start thinking about the grocery list that we're going to do, uh, the, our plans for the rest of the day? No. After we receive communion with humility, we say the body of Christ, we say amen, we go back, we do thanksgiving because we are not worthy, none of us. We've received Christ into our hearts. And then after that, we do the closing prayer and end the mass. When the priest says, the mass is ended, let us go in the peace of Christ. It's not the time for us to say, Yes, it's finally over. We say, thanks be to God, meaning the words I've heard today, the words spoken to me today through the scriptures, I'm going to take them and live them out this week until I come back to Mass the next week. It's a challenge. Go in peace. Go into the world and spread the good news. May God continue to help us as we appreciate the liturgy of the Mass, as we appreciate the past of the Mass, and may the, may the participation at the Mass continue to bring us closer to God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. the interest of time today, I'll skip the creed on purpose and continue with the prayers of petition. Please stand. Let us with thans thanksgiving, let us with faith and hope offer our prayers to God. For increased vocations to the diverse ministries that give life and abundance to the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For civil authorities who, through prayer and meditation, grow to value the enduring power of loving charity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For sincere willingness to turn from condemnation and to grow in charity, let us pray to the Lord.
of the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those dedicated to faith formation and for those with whom they share the treasure of the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. In the silence of our hearts, we now offer to God the special prayers that we bring to his altar on this day. Good and gracious God, with humility and thanksgiving, we come to you and ask you to continue to bless us. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to participate at this Mass, which you have given us as a memorial of your passion. Father, we ask you to hear the prayers you have spoken aloud today, the prayers that your sons and daughters hold in their hearts, the prayers for friends, prayers for co-workers, prayers for family members. Grant us this need through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the offertory. Pray, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He raised really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For as through man he worked for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. <laughs> Holy, 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 Lord God of all, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy. Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We now pray in the words our Savior taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, as you say to all of us here today, peace I give you. My peace, I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
confront one another and offer the sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worried that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and so shall be healed.
time of prayer. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Do we have, please sit for one second. Do we have um, any new parishioners? Anybody new to the community? Okay. Don't see anybody new? Okay. I know of one person leaving last weekend. Perry, come up. Wonderful. Any other person last weekend? Okay, great. So, it's our tradition. We stand over here. Okay, let's raise our right hands. Call upon God's blessing. Good and gracious God. We give you thanks for the opportunity you have given your son very to serve here for one year. As he now goes back to his new assignment, we ask you to continue to bless him, continue to open doors for him, continue to bless the family. Continue to answer his prayers whenever he calls upon you. May the blessing of Almighty God be with you. And as we travel, may you continue to be safe in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Um, thank you for everything that you did here. Security forces, right? Defenders. Defenders. Thank you for everything that you did. Thank you for helping me out. You came also came to my rescue when, when, the <laughs> when my, I went on leave, came back, and my scooter dis disappeared. Never found it. So thank you for helping and then coming to my rescue. And um, I know that you guys have a very, very um, long schedule, you know, with security forces, but each time we needed you. You stepped up. On behalf of the wing chaplain, this is a little coin. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Anything you want to say to the community uh, where you're going? You know, it was amazing to me to be out here. Um, it helped me mentally and spiritually. Um, Father Tommy, oh. um, it's amazing. Uh, that <laughs> one homie that really hit, hit home uh, uh, to my heart. Um, things I was going through late, during that time. Um, actually, you know, it brought us together at that time. Thank you so much. Thank you. When you said, um, um, thank you, Father, when you said, without Father, I had to look. Uh, is there another Father over here? <laughs> but thank you so much. Thank you. Can we put our hands together for him? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Holy Week starts next week. I sent out email on Friday for people to sign off. I've received one or two emails. I need your participation. Holy Week, during this pandemic, can we just make that little covenant with God and say, you know what? Holy Week of 2021, I'm going to participate. Starts with Thursday, start, of course, Palm Sunday, and then Holy Thursday, Good Friday, 
and then Easter Vigil. Can we all come together to participate? Mark your calendar. Make it a priority. It's a religious accommodation. Even if your supervisor says, oh, you got to be at work, call the office. We'll send an email. That's why chaplains are here. We we'll advocate for you. We do that for other faiths. We got to do that for our own too. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday of Holy Week, plan to participate and volunteer too. So send us an email. If you can volunteer, you'll be trained. It will take five minutes to train you to do different things. Thank you for your participation. And thank you for your faith. God is good. All the time. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us join the peace of Christ. Thank you, God.